Okay, evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity. Uh -huh. Okay, sine of 1 over x. All right. Well, let's take this x uh, times the sine of 1 over x. So we have x times, excuse me, well, do it below. We have x times the sine of 1 over x. I'm going to multiply by 1 in the form of 1 over x over 1 over x. That's equal to 1 over x times x times the sine of 1 over x all over 1 over x, right? I just multiplied 1 over x here, 1 over x down below. This and this cancel. I'm left with the sine of 1 over x all over 1 over x. Now I have this thing again. Okay, well, now we take the limit. But this time the limit is, it's saying as x goes to infinity of this thing, sine of 1 over, you know what, I don't like doing that. Sine of 1 over x over 1 over x. I like it to actually be vertical. Well, this, this, equals a. As x goes to infinity, as this goes to infinity, this whole thing goes to 0. So a is actually going to 0. So this is the same as the limit as x goes to 0 of the sine of a over a. We know what this limit is already. It's equal to 1. That's it. Mathematical manipulation. Uh, the, big, the, the question that most kids ask is that, how do you know how to do this? Well, you don't. Um, there is no way of looking at a problem and knowing exactly what steps you're going to take. You just sort of try. What you saw here is the finished product. What you didn't see was the five or six different things that we tried to do, you know, manipulations that didn't go anywhere, that we ended up hitting a wall. And that's what's going to happen. So what you want to do um, in calculus from this point forward in your math work and your science work, you want to disabuse yourself of this notion that you're supposed to look at a problem and just all of a sudden know exactly what to do. There are too many steps at this point uh, in, in higher math and higher science for you to actually be able to see the entire path in your head. Sometimes you will. But sometimes you just have to start, especially when it involves some sort of mathematical manipulation to make the problem a little bit more tractable. You just have to start, and you see where you go. Maybe you would have tried x and over x. That didn't do anything. You just try, and then if that doesn't work, if you hit a wall, you go back and you start again. In this case, it turned out to be 1 over x, 1 over x. It fell out. It fell out. Perfect. And you get to your answer that way. Trust the mathematics. Don't you want to trust the mathematics and you want to trust your intuition, but don't trust the fact that just because you don't see the entire path that you don't know how to solve the problem. You need to be able to work a couple of steps at a time because the problem, the solution might be so far ahead that you can't actually see it. The solution might be, you know, there might be a curve, it might be around the curve. Well, you can't see the curve ahead, but if you take a couple of steps toward it, then you can see the curve ahead. That's how this works. So. Just do that. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's not like, you know, we look at these problems and automatically know what to do. Most of the time, we ourselves don't, uh, particularly in with the things that we deal with in our, you know, in our research or anything else. We don't know. We just, <laughs> we try things. Most of the time, we actually fail. What you're seeing is the ultimate, is the actual, the final success. So it makes it look like, oh, yeah, this is really simple. Let's just do this. No. So anyway, um, I hope that helps. Uh, take good care, and uh, I will see you next time. Thank you for joining us here at Educator.com. Bye-bye.